This is One on One. Here we are at the 2017 New Jersey Education Association Convention. Of all the people, I'm gonna hurt other people, I don't mean to, I don't mean to offend you, but I really, really wanted to meet this young lady right here. She is Amy Anderson, the 2017 through 2018 New Jersey State Teacher of the Year. What an honor. American Sign Language Teacher at Ocean City High School. Congratulations, Amy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, real quick. When you found out that you were the Teacher of the Year, what was your first reaction? Uh, just shock. Just shock. Um, and excitement, I think, because as Teacher of the Year, I represent all of the teachers throughout New Jersey, but also as an American Sign Language teacher and member of the deaf community. It's an opportunity to represent deaf culture, to represent my students who find this passion in American Sign Language mm. and um, promote that awareness as well. Explain the actual teaching, the, the, the process of teaching sign language. Okay, so I use an immersion method. Um, in my classroom, we don't use our voices, so maybe the first day, first couple of days. Then all in. Yeah, then we're all in. That's what immersion and, means. Yeah, and they they can do it. They don't believe it at first, the ASL ones, but they, um, yeah, we do. I teach them some survival signs at first, in case they have to go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever it is, and then we're just full steam ahead, and they are amazing, what these kids can do. I mean, why is it so important for students, for, for all of us, to know how to sign? ASL is the third or fourth biggest language or most used language in the United States. We have um, a deaf community that, although if we put all of the deaf people in one place would be small, is really spread out all over the country. And what's really exciting that's happened in Ocean City is with all of the students learning how to sign, um, Ocean City's become known as a deaf-friendly town. A so, deaf-friendly town. Deaf -friendly town. So um, when deaf people come to Ocean City, it's a big tourist attraction. They're walking on the boardwalk. They're shopping on Asbury Avenue. Place. Yeah. There are students who are signing with them. So at first, they were just like, oh my gosh, here's you know somebody that can sign. And now it's very commonplace. So I think that feeling of comfort, of just natural, here's this other language, um, the more that could be widespread, you know, better for another community that's part of all of us. One of the things that struck me as I was looking at the notes, it, it said that you really want to take on the perceptions that some have, whether, I don't, know, I don't want to use the word prejudice, but the misconceptions of those who are dealing with deafness. Correct. So, really, the first day of my class, I tackle this. Um, I How? use diverse. Well, I use diversity jelly beans, so the flavor does not match the color. And so, right away, I want my students to know that culture and language are connected, and um, that we're going to talk about stereotypes. We're going to talk about what is the stereotype assumptions. on the so, part of some? Not all. I, I hate when people say stereotypes in the sense that everyone looks at it that way. That's not true. Right. Many, some do. Go ahead. Um, so, what I will ask the groups of students to do is, in a you know, have a conversation. Um, are deaf people a disabled group or are they a cultural group? And nine times out of ten, most of the students, unless they have a sibling who took my class and know what I want them to say, will say it's a disabled group. And then I tell them by. December, when you're taking midterms, you're going to be able to tell me why all of the reasons why the deaf community is a culture with a shared language, a shared history, arts and literature, poetry, theater, um, and just to shift the perception of here's this group that I thought was disabled or lesser than, and now looking at the richness of how it can enrich my life, and then I want them to turn that to themselves, where often they're feeling less than those around them. It's not a disability, is it? No, it, it really is Where not. Where the heck did we get that? Well, anybody who's different, I think, um, or a smaller minority culture within the majority culture. The majority culture always thinks that the minority culture wants to be like them. Yeah. And wants to get closer to that idea of normal. But um, my deaf friends, if you told them, I'll, I can give you a pill and tomorrow morning you're going to be hearing, they would not want to do it. 
they would not want to be hearing because that's not part of who they are. Just like um, hearing people would not want to be deaf tomorrow, then I wouldn't be Amy Anderson. Because mm. Amy Anderson, my part of my identity is the fact that I'm hearing. So um, my deaf friends embrace their deafness, the culture, the language, the community it gives them. Um, and that's when my students can understand that, that's when they fall in love with ASL. Speaking of falling in love, how much do you love what you do every day? I love it. I tell my students, if I won the lottery tomorrow, you'd still be stuck with me. I'm still coming really? in every day. Oh, I, it's, it's part of me, it's you're part of my says, identity. You're not gonna say, I'm done, no. I got the cash, I'm out. No, then I wouldn't be me anymore. It wouldn't be me. And the moment, I remember um, it was during my internship at the Maryland School for the Deaf, and I had a third grade class and was teaching, and all of a sudden I just stopped and thought, I get to do this for the rest of my life. Wow. And I do, I do. Final question. What does it mean to you to have that, I know we got a shot of that team, that medal on your um, beautiful dress that basically just says, Amy Anderson, 2017, 2018, New Jersey State Teacher of the Year. Folks at the NJA, a lot of folks think that you're special. You say what? I say I represent all of the special teachers throughout New Jersey. We are always one, two, or three in the nation in education. We have teachers all across the state who feel as I do, who would go into work every single day regardless of um, other opportunities. They love their students. They give all of themselves. And so to be able to represent that, what an honor and what a gift. For those of us who have uh, spent time as public school students, my father, his two sisters, so many relatives in our family, public school teachers, for our children who have gone through the public schools, uh, as parents, we say thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Wells Fargo, Caldwell University, Hackensack Meridian Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, the Northward Center, and by NJM Insurance Group. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.